everyone welcome back to the channel today i have nikhil with us he is my senior from mscac and he is currently working as a research scientist at lg ai hey nikhil thanks a lot for taking out the time to thank you abdur it's my pleasure to be here yep uh, that's great uh, so why don't we start with a brief introduction about you Sure. Uh, so right now I'm an LG AI research scientist mm-hmm. working here in downtown itself, uh, LG Toronto AI lab. Uh, I'm an MSCAC student. I'm just cr- going chronologically back. Right. Uh, and before that, I was working for about two years back in India as a software developer. Uh, of course, uh, after completing my bachelor's in the field of computer science. Right. So uh, as you said, you. You you were previously in software engineering. So, what made you decide to transition your career from software engineering uh, or development to uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning? Sure. Uh, so, you know the hype for about some years that has been created around this field um, of uh, before AI, I should say, uh, data science is is growing in market for a while. Okay. Uh, I could see that this this field, particularly of artificial intelligence, uh, for some time has seen uh, at least two winters in in its whole uh, tenure, starting from nineteen fifties. Uh, uh, so. One winter, I guess, happened in 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 about nineteen seventies mm-hmm. when the market went a little down, or people uh, search stopped searching a l- little less about it. And then again, there was a winter in the years somewhere between two thousand to two thousand six, mm-hmm. uh, until unless this deep learning or or more of machine learning and data science came into uh, the production systems of of some big giants uh, when the when the uh, hype got picked up. Mm-hmm. So this this of course this this hype around the area. And of course, the greed to know more, or actually how the human intelligence works, uh, it, it's because AI is just a mimicry of the same. Okay. So just to know about how things work, how how human psychology works, or how we think, uh, was the main reason that I switched from software engineering to uh, to the field of AI. Uh, having said that, at the heart, I'm a core engineer in myself okay. because. Even after having a specialization, I come from a computer science engineering background in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, of course, there's a scientist or uh, there's an engineer bef- in, in me before saying I'm, I'm into the field of AI. That's great. Such a great answer. So, what part of AI do you specialize in? Uh, to say something that I'm, I'm, I'm specialized in is, is something uh, I'll, I'll resist to answer because I'm, 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 I guess I'm still in a learning phase. Uh, it's, it's such a vast field, the overall uh, uh, artificial intelligence, it's such, such a general term these days. Right. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, for some time I have been exploring the classical machine learning techniques, mm-hmm. uh, and after that I, I started exploring a little on the side more on natural language processing, which is something with, which is very common these days, or, or okay. uh, in up in the research uh, something called as generative modeling. That is something to create novel out of the facts or the uh, probabilities that you can learn of. So right. I guess I'm. I'm I won't say I'm a specialized in that, but still I'm, I'm in a learning phase, mm-hmm. um, mostly around generative modeling and uh, right now into the large language modeling piece, which okay. is NLP side. Right. So uh, just to clarify, chat GPT is kind of, you know, related to these, right? Generative right, right. modeling. So it, it's a mixture of actually, uh, it's generative modeling for natural language processing. Oh, okay. uh, chat GPT. Is, uh, is 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 doing something state of the art uh, that that uh, that's inspired by the early architectures that were proposed in past in the recent past, uh, okay. and it's it's using both uh, artificial intelligence, two forms of AI itself. One is reinforcement learning, and other is deep learning. Okay. So it's somehow somewhere at the combination of the two. So. Um, AI is such a hot topic at the moment that a lot of students in uh, their undergrads are trying to pursue this field. So what advice would you have for uh, aspiring ML engineers? Like how should they start? Sure. So uh, uh, this is this is not the first time that I'm hearing this question. Yeah. Uh, many of my friends even, they, they talk to talk to me, hey Nikhil, uh, I want to enter this field of data science or uh, AI in general, mm-hmm. uh, some particular niche fields. My first question always to them is, uh, do you think you really want to be in this field? You want to make a learning in this field, or mm-hmm. is it that uh, it, it's just the hype that's 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 making you transition to this this field? Which is the first question, which no one else could answer for you. You are the first one to answer the question for yourself. Right. Having said that, 
I guess uh, the ecosystem uh, is, is building in a way that if you can churn out something from the data uh, uh, of the sort that you collect mm -hmm. uh, and if it could be of help to you. So uh, this, this is a very famous quote which people usually use is that data is the new oil. Right. But I disagree from it because data is not the new oil. Unlike oil, mm -hmm. which used to be something with that, that triggers the economies of the world, Data is something more precious than that. You you cannot reuse the oil, but you can reuse the data again and again to to churn out some some important facts. What happened? What will happen? And how it will affect the future uh, businesses? Right. So uh, that's the that's the main and core point, which uh, of course one has to see that that are they really uh, wishing to transition into this field? But yeah, if if someone wish to transition uh, into this field, my my suggestion will be. Uh, to, to clear up the basics first, uh, having said that, what do I mean is the basics includes the fundamentals of computer science, mathematics, mm -hmm. probability and statistics, mm -hmm. uh, which which I guess make the core of uh, are the bread and butter of this, this overall space of deep learning or machine learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, build your, build your uh, expertise on top of them by choosing a particular area that entrusts you the most. Right. So uh, what you're saying is that even like I've seen this a lot, uh, what happens is, you know, when students get into machine learning, they just go into the fancy or, uh, you know, the, the pretty stuff. They just, you know, pick up, you know, deep learning uh, already like pre-built model and they just try to do something like cat versus dog or things like that. But what you're saying is that first you need to build a fundamental. You need to understand what's happening behind the scenes. Right. And then you decide what to do. Right. What what to pursue or mm -hmm. which field to go into. Uh, right when back back about three four years back when I was uh, an undergrad student, mm -hmm. there used to be something called as YOLO. Mm -hmm. uh, you only look once yeah. uh, in the field of vision. Uh, that 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 was very famous because it was deployable in, in every every other video which I could see or mm -hmm. uh, someone saying, hey, I know AI was putting a video. Hey, I trained a model using YOLO. Uh, but YOLO. but my, my curiosity always there used to be what YOLO is and how it works. Mm -hmm. Is this the only thing? Is this the end of the world? Uh, is this the thing that you, if you learn, you become a, you, you become good at a field? Oh. Well, uh, slowly exploring the same, I got to know, no, this is, this, that's not true. Right. And, and there are many things which you could explore. Uh, Yola is just one example. Uh, there are multiple others in, in, in the field, uh, respective fields, I would say. Do you think uh, for students, at least undergrads, like internships are uh, like a core component of their learning? Like, should they take up AI or ML based internships in order to learn? Sure. Uh, uh, learning is something very subjective, I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, internships uh, actually build your mindset to work in a very uh, strict scenario where mm -hmm. you're focused on one particular thing. Mm -hmm. Pursuing an internship in the field of AI uh, uh, just before starting your career mm -hmm. uh, or, or when you are in a in, in, in uh, mostly in undergrad stages, I guess it helps a lot. Yeah. But is that the only way to pick up uh, the skills in this field or, or or not? So that's a question that, 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 that everyone should think of. Mm -hmm. And I feel... Uh, if you get internships, that's well and good. But even if you complete some of the in interesting projects by yourself mm. that are of interest to you and not to the companies, even that could help you to build your learning as well. Oh, okay. okay. So internships are not like as... Like, it's not like uh, they're crucial in order to learn. It's uh, just... It's Yes, it, it's not. It, your learning is again. Uh, I said it's sub, very subjective. Right. Uh, uh, at times, internship could offer a limited area uh, mm -hmm. to to uh, to learn because it, it's oriented toward what the business needs are at that mm -hmm. point in time. Right. And you somehow the other way are just inclining your interest to what business needs. Right. So, uh, learning through projects uh, is is something. Uh, that I personally love because mm -hmm. you get a chance to explore the things that you like, right. you learn, you can learn from. So, uh, of course, a mix of both internships and projects is what I will recommend to recommend. undergrad students at this point in time. Uh, even my background is a mix of both internships and projects. Um, do you recommend students uh, to take up part-time roles in AI or ML, uh, maybe at a startup here in Canada, uh, just to learn or put it on their resume? Sure. Uh, 
my suggestion will be if if there is an opportunity uh, uh, where you can earn and learn right. that that's great mm -hmm. uh, which will only add to your skill set mm -hmm. and at the same time will help you give your monthly rents <laughs> so uh, if, even this is something that i when i came to this uh, ecosystem of toronto in general mm -hmm. uh, and then and starting in the field of ai uh, i also approached to some companies here and there to pursue part time in this particular field mm -hmm. uh, but of course i wasn't able to manage the time between my courses and that so i, I didn't pursue that later but uh, uh, i guess it's a, it's a good venue uh, 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 the part times are a good venue to explore the field or or learn something new okay that's great um, so at the time like i'm doing a part time uh not in ai but uh, in cloud because like i'm kind of into that field so i think yeah it's a, like it's it's a really good learning opportunity because uh, you know back in india i had a back end development experience and now i'm getting sort of into sure so cloud through that like um unlike the ecosystem that we come from of, mm -hmm. of or, or the academic uh, be, uh, uh, setting that we come from there are less opportunities to actually work and 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 study at the same time right. so there's a mismatch uh, which possibly do not exist over here in the right. ecosystem of toronto mm -hmm. uh, at the same time when you are taking your courses if you think you have time you can you can pursue the internships as well right. um uh, Uh, which is interesting what you are learning in 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 your school or in your courses you can apply that in real time uh, in if you get a relevant or the similar looking part time jobs right. so i guess that can help uh, build your learning curve right right uh, that's good that's helpful and i like one of the more like important reasons why i had put up this question uh, in this interview was uh, interview or i would say podcast was that a lot of students have seen they just come here and uh, they try to take up some sort of survival job but if possible if they take up a job which is kind of related to their career it would be much more helpful like as you said you will up, you will apply exactly what you learned in your classes into the real life work or part time that you uh, are working on true uh, uh, no offense or or, yeah. or nothing nothing bad to say on on the kind of part time job that you mm. students usually look for right. uh, in in the ecosystem when they just enter mm -hmm. uh, 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 in into the country of canada mm -hmm. uh, that's relevant and that's meaningful for the time for them to exist or start their life or the journey over here right. uh, on a tot in a totally new country uh, miles apart from their homeland and what what not mm -hmm. but if at the same time you could uh, uh, you could wait and and uh, thoroughly search in the market mm -hmm. if there is an opportunity uh, where you can contribute through what you're learning in your courses mm -hmm. uh, nothing could beat that uh, and uh, as as a side effect of the same you can put those things on your resume as well right. to showcase showcase it to your uh, uh going to be employers uh, who can see that hey you are really enthusiastic about the field right. and you started uh, to to work around it from the very beginning uh, when you entered into the ecosystem right uh, that's so helpful thanks nikhil um also i have a dedicated video on how you can find part time jobs uh, here in canada so if you're interested Uh, to do that yourself then you can check that video out i'll put the link in the description below so uh, nikhil what are some of the skills that aspiring ml engineers or students should focus on sure uh, as i said uh, the uh, before getting into the hype of uh, what chat gpt is doing or what right. dali kind of models are doing it's very important that uh, one should build the basics strong mm -hmm. what do i mean by basics in the field of uh, uh, in in the field of machine learning or data science in general is uh, first to uh, have a good grasp of the uh, general computer science skills right. uh, of of coding mm -hmm. in the language of your choice uh, as of now python is the most favored language that people usually use for for uh, data science mm -hmm. python and r i i will, i should i should say mm -hmm. uh, at time people use matlab uh, for particular areas of their concern as well uh, having said that first build a basics with the with your uh, computer science general skills following on top of that you could start with your basics in the field of probability and statistics right. how those uh, because those concepts of probability linear algebra and uh, statistics are are actually the uh, small tools which you will be using in a day to day mm -hmm. life uh, uh, either in your courses and and if, if you if you grow up to a company uh, if you join the ecosystem of a companies right uh, 
following that uh, uh, having learned those mathematical toolkit with you uh, you can transition from there to the classical concepts of machine learning uh, like supervised algos unsupervised algos clustering algos uh, of the sort right uh, uh, and once you are done with that not only not only these particular algos in general what a machine learning is mm-hmm. uh, uh, so the basic um, definition of machine learning when it comes mm-hmm. uh, they say the three things that you have to focus on is what the task you are doing which is just one component of it right. following that you can look at uh, how how the performance will vary and then you can look at the evaluation matrices so these uh, three topics if you can focus on them mm-hmm. uh, i guess it it will it will serve you in a long run uh, yes so what other things you could look at is uh, why particular matrices are used how can i evaluate the system better right. uh, are there any biases that i'm 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 forgetting by using these particular evaluation matrices can i do something better or not uh, and 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 some other core concepts as well uh, like what is the regularization and optimization trade off in the field um, what is bias and variance how are they uh, uh, affecting one another right. and 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 some other uh, one to one effects so you know there's a famous uh, uh, a famous uh, principles uh, which which i say are a wisdom that we are using from past in the field of machine learning right. uh, so so always be conscious about that if you are learning about uh, this this field or entering into this field these these two principles are that i always think of is uh, no free lunch theorem uh, okay. it it simply translates to that mm-hmm. how it translates in the field uh, in the field of machine learning is that uh, th- there's no model which is better or 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 unbetter or mm. to say uh, to one another right. uh, better or good or bad compared right. to one another each model will perform equally well if you give more and more data to it and you give and you hyper uh, give right set of hyper parameters right. you tune it better everything will be everything will give uh, equal amount of results to you mm-hmm. it's 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 just that how much time and data you give to it to learn and second is uh, okam's razor principle okay. what this principle says is that if there are multiple hypotheses that you can choose from mm-hmm. choose the simplest one okay to to complete a task you know this is such a simple principle and in, in even in our day to day life we usually use it yeah how how long how uh, how long or old this principle is it dates back to something between 1200 to 1300 oh. so it's, it's 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 i guess it's 1267 okay uh, uh, so uh, i can't quote the right date over here mm-hmm. but it's it's of that time and the thing is we are still using that principle so it's an right. ancient wisdom that yeah. we are bringing to this Machine time right. of 2023 yeah. so that's that's interesting i guess that's great that's great so students should start with the basics first learn about uh, the mathematics behind uh, the things behind ml uh, but before that like just be familiar with the concepts in computer science first right. like be good at that and then you can slowly transition and bring all of that knowledge sure. and consolidate them into uh, things in ml right concepts right. in ml you know why i'm saying that is because mm-hmm. why why the basics of computer science are important mm-hmm. uh, so they, there's a compulsory course that every computer science graduate in the undergrad usually reads is mm-hmm. theory of computing okay so that's that's a course which i guess dates back to 1950s or 60s uh-huh. how mathematically computers should work or or how how logic should be built it's uh-huh. such a simple thing around that uh if you learn that while growing your knowledge in the particular fields say natural language processing mm-hmm. there's something called as the field that came bef- from which nlp originates mm-hmm. uh, is is what called as computational linguistics okay so computational linguistics use many principles from that simple concept of computer science which is theory of computing, computing. so maybe you can use that knowledge okay. uh, you can you can learn that knowledge first and use it later while while looking at how the things transitioned in the particular field of expertise that you want to go in okay. and 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 could pick up the pace from that mm-hmm. if you're clear about basics anyone could question you anything you you will be clear with your flow point uh, what things happened in the mm-hmm. past and how the things are transitioning now right. uh, so like when did the hype of deep learning start coming in market uh, 
probably it was the year of 2012 or 2014 when the things uh, start getting really hot in this field so mm -hmm. it's not even it's, it's just a decade back right not 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 more than that right mm -hmm. uh, uh, having said that uh, this is the field of machine learning or ai is not something very new Right. This has already seen two winters, mm -hmm. and this is maybe the adulthood of this uh, this this particular technology right. that the boom has come in the market as of now. Right, oh, such a beautiful answer. <laughs> Thanks, Nikhil.